Hello there, precious people out there. How you doing? I'm not really real. I'm I'm just waiting, waiting for Jesus to return. I am walking through the fire, but God is with me and like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Everybody's fleeing from me. I've been loving people. I've been trying to fellowship with people. I know two sisters. No, it was three. Now it's two. <laughs> and I, oh, I've been searching. I've been going back on Facebook, you know, from people I met from Bible studies. Block. Scripture. Block. Oh my gosh, like what? This is a great falling away. It's no joke. Oh my gosh. People claim to be Christian. They claim Jesus, but they don't know him. They do not walk in love. They lie. They don't teeth. They dirty teeth. Like mine's probably dirty. But I'm cleaner on the inside than I am on the outside. <laughs> because of Jesus. But man, people have been lying through their teeth. They have not been loving. People, people are walking in love. <laughs> they say love, but they don't walk in love. They post scriptures. They talk of Jesus, but they don't show love. The narrow path is a difficult path. I have been trying to find fellowship. The Bible says, do not forsake the assembly of yourselves together as you see the day approaching. Especially as we see the day approaching, which we're in that time, like, hello, what's fellowship? But no, everybody wants to scatter. Jesus did say, when I come, will I find faith on earth? He did say that. It's a narrow path. Man, these last days are no joke. They tough. They tough. People, people, you know, they pretend they're a brother and sister for a while. They form an emotional connection with you. And then... straight and narrow and go through afflictions and persecution and slander and have your name cast out as evil and 
all sorts of evil things said against you falsely for his name's sake. Great is your reward in heaven. People are wicked. We all are. We all are. Including myself. But I'm made new in Christ. Hallelujah. Forgiven for my sins. Fearing God and walking it out with him. Taking his word seriously. Cleansing the inside of my cup. That's what I'm, I'm doing with Jesus every day. I'm not conforming to the pattern of this world. But being transformed by the renewing of my mind, you should do the same. But a lot of people are, mm -mm. people are just, people like, they don't love you. <laughs> they say Jesus. talks about being sown on good ground. A lot of people are not sown on good ground. Okay, they are not. I'm like, what? Oh my gosh. Like, the Lord is so far beyond the pleasures of sin that are fleeting and bring forth death. Oh, they are not worth it. Oh, no, 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 no. God is so much better. Walking in holiness and righteousness, which is an act on our part. Although, we're not, we can't make ourselves right. We're made right by his righteousness, not established in our own righteousness. But that doesn't mean that you can still act like a devil and think you're going to heaven. We have to clean out our cup. We have to forgive and, and love people and show mercy and grace and be tenderhearted and compassionate and forgiving, which we can't do on our own. We need his strength. He is, he's better than sin, man. You gotta, you gotta be like, go by sexual immorality, whatever you're going through, whatever sin that God has convicted you of. You gotta turn from it. Turn from a pickle like a hot potato. Pursue holiness with Jesus. Because everything else is sinking sand. And you don't wanna go to hell. And that fear of the Lord is a good thing. It helps you depart from that sin that seems so pleasurable, but. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. God's not a liar. God's not a liar like man. It's not. Be tormented forever without him. If you, if you act like a devil, if you continue to walk in the ways of the devil, you'll go to hell. And you, it'll be a torment for all eternity. Like, you don't even understand. Okay? Like, oh my gosh. I wish, oh God, I wish, I wish people would just realize hell is real and stop acting like a devil and think you're going to go to heaven. Like, you can't, you can't act like a devil and go to heaven. We do, we, I act like a devil sometimes, but I'm going to heaven. And it might seem like a hypocrite saying that right now, but let me explain. I'm forgiven by Christ. I walk with Jesus. I fear God. I come to repentance, and God forgives me. Are you coming to repentance when you screw up, or are you just continuing to act like a devil and just get a seared conscience and think you're good? Like, you need to repent when you do evil and ask God for forgiveness. And if that's not happening, then you're going to continue acting like a devil all the time without any repentance, you're not going to heaven. If you, if you repent, God will forgive you because our, our, our um, advocate is Jesus Christ who cleanses us from all of our sins. There's a scripture about that. I just don't remember it. But he cleanses us from our sins when we ask for forgiveness. So praise God. Sometimes I do act like a devil. I do. I do. I do. I am not a perfect person. Not at all. And very, very self 
focus a lot and very <laughs> sometimes just mean and mad. I praise God because my husband, he's, he's so gentle and loving when I'm like <laughs> in those modes. And then, but you know what? God brings me around. I realize and I'm sorry. And I tell him sorry, you know, and he forgives me. But are you doing that in your life? Or are you just continuing to be mean to people? And then not even feeling bad about it. <laughs> and people have feelings too, you know. You're not the only one with feelings. Oh my gosh. We can't love without Jesus. Bible says we love because he first loved us. If we're not in a relationship with Jesus, if you're not in a relationship with Jesus, you just can't love. You just cannot even love without God. You need God. You need to come to repentance. You need to humble yourself before him. You need to read his word. You need to, um, like, you should sing to him because it's beautiful. And it's how you can enter into his presence, like Psalms 100 verse 2 says. So serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. There's something beautiful that happens in the spirit when we, when we sing to him. We draw close to him and we get to feel his love for us. And it's beautiful. Are you seeking him? Is he everything to you? Most people, he's not. They like their sin more. They like the world more. They don't want to be, they don't want to submit to God's word. They don't want to, they want to think they're good. <laughs> no, he's good. We're all evil. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. And we have a propensity to go towards sin. And we need the Holy Spirit to help us in God's word to change. And... You need to seek him like he's got to be number one. You know, you gotta, you gotta be not, Romans 12, 2 says, Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good, perfect, and acceptable will of God. That's how it changed. And by his Holy Spirit. Because if you just got the word, but you ain't got a, a relationship with him, you ain't got nothing. You're on singing sand. A lot of people are going to go to hell. A lot of people are going to go to hell. They don't translate into love. People don't want to obey God's word and love people and forgive. There are some things we have to do. I mean, it's not, a, you can't keep the laws and think you're going to go to heaven. But we do need to do like things like forgive, be compassionate, be tender-hearted. But if you don't fear God, then you tend not to do these things. <laughs> you need the fear of God. So you could be like, you know what, they really hurt me, but you know what, God, you say to forgive, and if, you, if I don't forgive you, you don't forgive me. Receive the fear of the Lord. Forgive. Forgive. Okay. It's the right thing to do. You got forgiven for your sins. You forgive them when they sin against you because they're blind in their soul. <laughs> In their mind, in their will, and their emotions, they're messed up. They're really messed up at the moment. So just forgive them and love them. And it's hard, but cry out to God. He will help you because you could do all things to Christ who strengthens you. You know what? You need a relationship with God because people will judge you, reject you, love you, and then quickly, they will love you. Oh, they'll get their hooks in you. They'll love you, and then they'll qu quickly cast you off. 
You're not supposed to do this. People that are, you know, God says you'll know my disciples by their love for one another. I, I know two sisters who I, who, who are really loving and I think are in Christ and wouldn't do some, such a thing. But I've been around a lot of Pharisees, a lot of people who claim to love Jesus, but they they say with their mouth that they love God, but their heart is far from Him. A lot of people like that, and they don't know how to love Jesus. They act like they love you for a little while, and they freaking. <laughs> Not even a bite. <laughs> 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 Not even a bite. <laughs> oh, what a cry. Not even a bite, though. <laughs> but just, that's it. Like, I'm like, what? Like, this happened to me two times with people that I really love. <laughs> But you know what? Praise God. Praise God. I'm going to be eternally rewarded for all this suffering. It's going to be great in heaven. And that's where it matters. Not even a goodbye, though. Just. My strong tower, my deliverer, hallelujah. His mercies fail not, his compassions fail not, they are new every day, hallelujah. He's a good God. And when I am weakest, he is strong. And he's a good, good father, he takes care of us. He takes care of me so much. He's so good. He's so loving. He's my everything. He's my all in all. Amazing. In the worst storms and the deepest pain, he's my comforter, my counselor, my teacher. Cursed is the man that makes flesh his strength, and whose heart departs from the Lord. Don't make flesh your strength. Oh my gosh. So, the two people that I love that cut cut cords with me without even a goodbye. They made flesh their strength. Oh so foolish. <sighs> it jacks you up, man. How are you going to lean on another person to be your crutch when they are a person too battling their own stuff? And, it, and they see like how many people and you expect them, you think they're going to be all together in their soul? Uh -uh. Like no, like each person has their own battle to fight and like we're there to love and encourage each other, but to make somebody else your real, your real strength, like lean on and highly esteem them, not a good idea. God is a counselor, okay? In Isaiah 96, it says he's our counselor. He's a better counselor than people, especially ones that could have wrong motives. They get paid, you know? <laughs> I know, I... I had the option of seeing therapists and um I didn't like it because I was not in love. I was looking for love. God gives us love. 
Says we love because he first loved us. We think we can love others, but we don't really have love for others unless you know him and you're in him. It's a delusion of this world. When I first came to Jesus, I had a good friend named Mariah. We were we were friends since I was twelve. We met at camp. I was a Mormon, she was a Mormon, we were in the Mormon church together. And I loved her. She was my best friend. And when I came to Jesus, she was gone. We never fought. It didn't make any sense, but it did because of God's word. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. There's demonic, there's spirit realm there at play, there's demons at play. Without God's word, we're just blind. We don't even know. We don't even know. And sin and blinds you so bad. And she was just gone. Like, she was offended that I became a Christian. I didn't even say anything more for fitting. She was just mad at God. She, was, she said that scripture about him bashing the babies against the stone. I don't understand all that, but like whatever, God is right, man. <laughs> whatever it says, whatever the truth is, God is right. Like, I don't know. I don't know that scripture. I don't get it. But God is not an evil God. He's a good God. His ways are not our ways, but... She was just like, not really loving. She was there for my wedding. She cleaned my dress while I was sleeping. She was so loud, and I thought, dang, she really loves me. <laughs> oh, man. I wasn't very loving to her on our wedding day. I didn't even get photos with her. I don't know, I was blind. I was in sin too. And I didn't have Jesus. Or the word of God in my life. We're blind without Jesus, without the word. We're blind. Without the Holy Spirit. Without number one's word. <laughs> this Holy Spirit, no, number one is Holy Spirit. You also have to have some weird in you. Otherwise, you're just blind. It's just the demons out there. They don't really have love in us. They don't really have love when we hang out with the Lord and He fills us with His love, and then we can love because it says in the Bible we love because He first loved us. I'm going through it. I'm going through the fire right now, but it's good. And God's gonna refine me and prune me and be stronger and then be flying for a while and then I'll go through another pruning and another trial. This is just the walk of a Christian, man. We're in a war. But you know what? God's compassions fail not. They're new every morning. God's faithful. He's a deliverer. He's a fortress and a rock, a rock fortress, a place of s s safety and 
for a beat. When I feel like I can't do it anymore, I go ahead and sometimes the pain is so deep. But he is always good to me. He always comforts me. So if he's our comforter. We need it. <laughs> he's close to the broken heart and crushed in spirit and he's faithful. People may reject me. At least I got two sisters. No, he will reject me. But you know, he rejected Jesus too on the cross. He died for our sins. He was he healed people and gave the words of life of truth. And people rejected him and hated him. Oh my what? He's so good. The word is so good. How do people respond like this? I don't understand. People hate the light. People hate the light. They hate Jesus. They're gonna hate us. And we're in the last hour. Like, I mean, I'm not gonna say the last hour, but you know, like, Jesus is about to return. Like, he's really about to return. And I don't know if we're gonna go through the tribulation first or we get raptured out of here, but I hope we get raptured out of here before the tribulation. I really do. No matter what happens, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. He strengthens us. He's our strength. And things hurt, but God is a comforter. And he collects every day in a bottle. He cares. People don't care. But God cares. God cares. And he is more than any human could ever be. He is my rock, my fortress, my strong tower, my deliverer. Though we'll pass through the fire, it will not overtake us. Because greater is he than is in us than he that is in the world. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So if you're a Christian watching this, know that the storm will pass. God will get you there and he loves you in it. And on the other side of this broken world and these broken bodies and souls that we have. It's gonna be glorious. So hold on. Endure until the end and you shall be saved. Bye-bye. And for those of you guys who don't know Jesus, come to know him. Because if you don't, you're walking in darkness with the devil and what you sow, you will reap. Bye-bye.